You know, one of the interesting things I think about that record you worked on, OK Computer, is the title. And I read a quote from Tom York where he said that the album isn't necessarily about technology, but more about the isolation technology has created for society because everyone's constantly inundated with information. They're constantly plugged in. But that constant plugging in is actually kind of creating a social divide. Do you feel that that's relevant to today? And um, what are your thoughts on, I guess, the title OK Computer? Well, I, I understand where he was going. I think from my perspective, what's happened is just in one one area. Let me put it this way. When I first started in the business in the early 70s, there was something like a hundred recording studios in London. There are now three. Mm. <laughs> so what, if you like, computers or technology has done and you can, you can have a view whether this is good, bad, or different, is that it's reduced the necessity for musicians to be in a room making music. They can, as you know, you can do it on the, on the keyboard, uh, you can be in a different country, uh, and so on and so forth. So th there's a sense of the business diminishing in terms of people making music in the traditional way. So if, if Tom was on that, then yeah, he, he, he saw that happening. Maybe not in a musical sense, but certainly from my perspective, it's it, it, it's now a very, very different music scene. It's people on computers and so on. And that's not to denigrate it. It's fine, it can be a wonderful thing, but um, the only area where people are in the same room and they're making music together is live music. And of course, ironically, in the last two years, that's virtually gone because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So that's the long answer to your question. But certainly computers have changed everything, but particularly in the music world. You know, that reminded me of a quote that I think Jim Morrison said, and also Freddie Mercury essentially kind of echoed the same thoughts later on, where they said that eventually they foresee computers becoming so sophisticated that the necessity to actually learn how to play will no longer be relevant. Well, I'm surprised Jim Morrison said that because that's a long time ago and he was in a band who played drums and guitars and, and didn't read music and ditto Freddie Mercury. Um, I th think the level of education you need to make music is certainly less. But having said that, you know, Paul McCartney famously said, I'm never going to learn how to read music because it would make my music less interesting. So uh, you can make music without any education at all. I mean, a lot of the, my clients, particularly in the film world, uh, wouldn't know a quarter note from an elephant. Uh, and they just go to the keyboard uh, and produce the music and then maybe somebody else orchestrates it and so on. So uh, yes, it's less necessary in some areas of music, film music particularly, but in the pop world, you never did have the need for much education. You know, Keith Richards never, <laughs> never read a book about, you know, harmony. Uh, so I think it's, it's a two way street. I think in some ways the education level is less and in other ways it's not necessary. Interesting. So, you know, one of the things I want to go back specifically to OK Computer, I know you weren't there for these sessions, but the majority of that record was recorded in an old mansion. I believe it was uh, St. Catherine's Court. Well, I, I didn't know that. I don't know what St. Catherine's Court is or was. Um, it's basically a, a 16th century old mansion, like brick okay. mansion. <laughs> There's a long history of, of bands recording in odd places. Led Zeppelin recorded in a house. I remember the Stones when they had to go to France because of tax reasons recorded in the south uh, of France, right? Yeah, it was a it, was it a kind of a house? With, yeah, yeah, I know. I don't remember the name, but it was in the south of France. It yeah, was, and yeah. It, it had a sort of a basement where they they recorded, it, and uh, Glyn Johns, the engineer, was having a nightmare because. <laughs> it's about the worst acoustic possible, but they seem to like it, so he got on with it. But um, I don't know. I think pretty. 
it's up to the engineer. If the engineer can isolate the sounds, if he can put the drummer in a place that he d doesn't spill all over the place. But then again, if you go back to pre-Beatles, you know, a lot of pop music, uh, let's say the blues, uh, was recorded in a bar. You know, in <laughs> um, I don't know, Blind Lemons and Lemon Jefferson or, you know, Bucker White or any of those guys it's recorded in a, in a pub, in a bar. So I think it's not a big deal, the acoustic thing. That's cool. I'm just curious about the, I guess, from your perspective, from like the technical end of it, when you're preparing either for specifically for the Radiohead session or in general, what is the, like, this, the pre preparation you have to do to get ready to, to conduct the orchestra? Sure. Well, not in this case, because Johnny had already scored the, the, the scores. But normally it would be that I would, most of the time I'm hired as an arranger stroke conductor. So the arranging part is uh, very fluid. It's a meeting with the client who sometimes is the producer, sometimes it's the artist. Uh, and he or she goes and says what they want. Uh, they want strings here, they want strings here, or no, no brief at all. Just, you know, see you there. So, which is the worst brief of all. <laughs> <laughs> so I then go away and I write what I think they want. Uh, I would demo it uh, electronically. I'd use samples to create a mock-up of what the string score is going to sound like. Uh, then I send that to the client. And about half the time they say, that's great. And the other half the time they say, no, we don't want it here, we want it there, and can you make this and so on, uh, alterations, and then I go back. So it's a to and fro thing where I make the changes according to the client, uh, and eventually we get to a place where they're happy with what they're hearing. So then I, um, I finalise the score, I then send it to a sub-editor who uh, um, basically reads through it and finds any mistakes, uh, and then he pro electronically produces the actual parts, the score, the, the pages of music that go on the stands in the in the studio. So that's the preparation process. Um, and it, as I say, it varies hugely. Uh, if it was Oasis, they'd just say, see you in the pub. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> what was your experience like working with Oasis, if I may ask? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Where to start? Um, and I don't, want, I don't want to end up in jail. <laughs> <laughs> That's very um, funny. So I can only say it was um, an experience. And uh, yeah, that's probably where I should leave it. That's very funny. <laughs> we'll leave it right there. Yeah. That's, that's